Hi, I'm Jack. I'm a third year PhB student at ANU studying biochemistry. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to do the biodetectives experiment. We're going to be investigating our fingerprints. Everyone has their own unique fingerprints. Um, the study of these fingerprints is called dermatoglyphics. So identical twins, you may think, look exactly the same, but actually they have different fingerprints, despite being genetically exactly the same. That's because before they're born, they have slightly different environments, which means that their fingerprints form differently. So in this experiment, you're going to find out what type of fingerprints you have, and also hopefully find out how forensic scientists can use fingerprints to solve crimes. So using the pencil, scribble a small section on this piece of paper like I have already. You want to try and get as much graphite down on the paper as possible. Next, you're going to take your thumb and push it over the scribble like this. You want to try and roll it around, but not move it to get as much of the graphite onto your thumb as possible. And it should be a bit gray. Okay, and then once you've got the graphite on your finger, you're going to take it and place it into the right box on the fingerprint worksheet and roll it around to try and get it all down. So that's a bit uh, faint, so you want to try and get, make sure that you use a lot of graphite and scribble for a while to make sure that you get lots and lots onto your finger. So you, if it's not working, uh, get the pencil again and scribble more on the paper to try and put as much graphite down as possible. And if it's, uh, if it's coming up faint, you can try putting some moisturizer or hand lotion on to try and put more oil on your fingers because it's the oil that's actually picking up the graphite. So I'm now going to put my finger down onto the graphite and then place it onto the paper. Onto the paper. So that's come out much better now. I've got a much more um, defined fingerprint. I can see the loops and different lines of my fingerprint. Uh, that make my fingerprint different from all of them. And if you look at it, after you've done all your fingers, you'll realize that every single one of your fingers has a maybe slightly similar, but definitely different fingerprint. So that's come out much better now, now that I've used the moisturizer and I've put uh, more um, pencil down on the paper. So now if you use the fingerprint pattern sheet that we've provided, you can compare the shape of your fingerprint to what uh, the different types of fingerprint. So my fingerprint on my right index finger has a central pocket loop. And that's actually, if I look at all of my fingerprints, most of them have at least uh, have the same. Um, some people's, all of theirs are a completely different type. So you need to find out exactly what, or you need to do all your fingers and find out which different types you have. Why not compare your fingerprints to your friends or family? See if they're similar to yours. Are you more similar to your friends? Are you more similar to your family? Does being genetically related to somebody mean that you've got more similar fingerprints? I don't know. You can go and find out. So ne next, we're going to see how scientists identify fingerprints at crime scenes. This is called dusting for prints. So first, we're going to take a glass or a cup. I'm going to use a glass. I'm going to hold it between my finger and my thumb quite tightly, trying to get make sure that I leave a fingerprint on the glass. Obviously, if you're a criminal, you probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, yep, yeah, I think that's good. So now I'm going to take the dust and a paintbrush. And I'm going to use that to try and find my fingerprints. So try and remember where you put your fingerprints on. I can kind of just about see mine. So on top of a paper plate to make sure you don't make any mess, you're going to then slowly dust away the, pa the paint, the powder, um, and be very, very gentle because we don't want to brush away our finger, our fingerprints. So I'm just going to tap the excess off and then try and brush. So once you've got, you can kind of see your fingerprint on the glass, what you're going to do is take a roll of clear tape. Then we're going to take the clear tape and we're going to place it over our fingerprint. Then we're going to pull it slowly, being very gentle, off the glass. Try and shake it out and get rid of most of the paint. And then onto a piece of paper, we're going to put this down. There we go, that's one fingerprint. I'm going to do it again for the other side.
There we go. So it might take you a few tries to get it absolutely right. Um, you've got to be really gentle with it, that you don't smudge your fingerprint, that you don't brush it away with a paintbrush. Sometimes all you need to do is just tap the glass to make the excess uh, powder fall away. Um, and then you should be able to see your fingerprints. So scientists use these fingerprints to see um, who has been at a crime scene. So sometimes they'll compare those fingerprints to ones they've got on file or to, uh, suspects they think might have committed the crime. Scientists started using fingerprints to catch criminals in the late 1800s and, to com and they had to compare every single fingerprint by eye to every single person that they thought might have committed the crime. Imagine how long that would have taken. Luckily these days we have really smart cameras and computers that can compare the patterns of every fingerprint to every other fingerprint all at once and we can catch criminals much faster because we can find out who was at a crime scene in seconds rather than it taking days. I hope you enjoyed this experiment, I certainly did. And remember when you're doing this experiment, try and keep it neat and tidy because the powder can go everywhere um, and try to be really, really careful um, because it's very easy to smudge those fingerprints.